Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we are going to be looking at the Sensational She-Hulk by John Byrne Omnibus. All right, guys, so I love She-Hulk, I love John Byrne, so I'm really excited about this book today. Um, I got this, and I have to show you, it has a huge, like, den in the cover, corner of the cover, like, um, and of course I got it at a discount but not enough of a discount to justify how ugly and gross that is. Like, I guess I wasn't paying attention and I just wanted it because I wanted it, so I have it. But otherwise, it's a great omnibus. Um, I'm so excited that they have it. I think this is the, uh, like, alternate cover, but this was a poster um, in the 80s that John Byrne did of She-Hulk, and I love it. It's just, like, uh, and this is, I want to say, like, um, probably around the time she was on Fantastic Four. It was definitely before um, her comedy comic book, but there's a lot of humor in this. She's jogging through Central Park, and of course, instead of a boombox, she just can carry a whole live band above her because she's strong, and I just love that. And there's so much humor to that, and that's great. So it's kind of fun that they used that poster as a cover as I don't think it's ever been used on a comic book before and so there's a little dust jacket we'll just put that to the side nice looking book so we've got our work cut out for us so I hope you have your cocktail or your blunt or whatever it is you uh, uh, you know do to make life better <laughs> while you're reading comic books or watching videos about comic books so this is very um, thick, obviously, you can see. Did I show that? Oh, the back cover. So this is the cover to the Sensational She-Hulk number one, uh, her first series after the Savage She-Hulk. Oh, I love that she's holding the She-Hulk there. <clears throat> is that how it always was? Anyway, the thing that bums me out about this so much, and I can't believe they've never corrected it. Obviously, I don't know what they want to stay true to whatever, but... I always felt like this was a mistake, having this be yellow. Like, I feel like her collar should be white there. I feel like they originally thought it was her skin. And, like, how would her costume stay up if that was her skin? I don't know. It, does it bother anybody else? Let me know. Because I just thought it was such a shame. Because this is such beautiful John Byrne art. There's such great, like, cross-hatching and so many good things going on. Anyway. So I got that out of the way, so let's get into it. It starts with the Sensational She-Hulk graphic novel, and the, this is more serious. This is, uh, like, pretty. Oh, it has Wyatt Wingfoot, her old love interest. I love Jen uh, Walters and Wyatt Wingfoot together. I thought they made an awesome power couple, and they just look great. This is when Marvel was doing graphic novels. I always have to point out this unfortunate inking here. This is Kim DeMulder thinking over John Byrne, and uh, they never worked together before. He seems like a pretty decent anchor, but I just don't understand that crotch shading. Anyway, I would have made a different choice. So this is kind of like just a lot of action. This is, uh... <laughs> but did I point out? No, I guess I didn't. Uh, but I do love that she has like a bathing suit tux tuxedo on, because, you know, she's she Hulk, she's seven foot tall and green. Why, why even try to dress discreetly? But so Marvel did these line of graphic novels. They were on these on great paper. I know everything's on great paper now, but you know, they were larger size and special stories. And um, so John Byrne did a She-Hulk one and this is it. And it's so great. You got this double page spread here of the Shield Helicarrier. And then here it gets a little problematic. Like she gets uh, taken prisoner, her and Wyatt. And why it, they all, it's a room full of men and they all just are standing there and they demand that she takes off her clothes for some stupid reason. Of course, here comes Dum Dum Dugan saying, you know, jeepers creepers, what the hell's going on here? Put your clothes back on. But the damage is done. The weird sexist trope has already happened. But hey, whatever. It's comic books in the 80s. I mean, things are so much different now. Thank God. But it just seems weird to see something like that in retrospect. I love this. So she's in a cage as she hulks. So she turns into Jen Walters and is able to crawl through the bars. So this is obviously a cage not capable of holding a normal human being. 
only a Hulk or a Wyatt Wingfoot, which is convenient, right? Um, the art is really good on this. I'm not knocking the anchor because I think he did a fairly competent job. I, you know, I like, uh, you know, it looks like Burns art and it's good. Not my favorite ink job on Burn, but I'll take it. It's always fun to have She-Hulk by Burn. You know, um, she started out as the Savage She-Hulk and, you know, Stanley created her. I forgot who drew the first issue, but I want to say it was someone fairly uh, renowned, like John D. Seema or someone crazy famous like that. But anyway, um, she wasn't as savage as like the Incredible Hulk, but she was more like cranky. And uh, then Roger Stern put her in the Avengers and um, like turned her into a fun character. And she quickly became a fan favorite and really thrived in that kind of portrayal. And John Byrne said, oh, I'm stealing her for uh, Fantastic Four. I guess part of the mantra of Secret Wars is uh, Jim Shooter wanted something, a major, um, he didn't want a <clears throat> Secret Wars to be dismissed as just a, you know, stunt or something. He wanted real ramifications. And um, that's why Spider-Man had his black costume changed. That's why she helped change the Fantastic Four for a brief period of time because uh, of Secret Wars. So, fun fact there. This little <clears throat> She-Hulk story from um, Marvel Comics Presents with uh, Bob Wiacek. I like job Bob Wiacek's inks and burn. I think they look good. Um, is this She-Hulk? Oh, I love this. This must have killed Burn because uh, he wasn't on Fantastic Four at the time. And um, I think Tom DeFalco was writing when he had that weird mutation or whatever and his uh his hide and um so you know but if to be included in the story it has to be on continuity that looks very much like a mobius galactus in a way what do you guys think i don't know it seems kind of influenced by that which is kind of strange because uh you know uh, galactus is such a jack kirby character and um, you would think that, I mean, Byrne definitely usually always does reference some more. See, that's what I'm talking about with that weird yellow collar. I hate it. Like, if it's supposed to be yellow and and light blue or whatever, no. That just doesn't work on any level. Sorry, guys. So this is the first, I was so excited when this first came out. This was, uh, they had some preview pencils in um, Marvel Age magazine, and it just looked amazing, and I was, like, dying waiting for it. Um, she's, like, fighting the circus of crime here. I love, uh, that was part of, you know, since, uh, John Byrne, the shtick is, it's supposed to be comedy, and the shtick is her breaking the fourth wall, which you see more and more of as the series progressive progresses, and by breaking the fourth wall, I know you all know what I mean, but in case you don't, it means, like, Okay, so this is, we as the the viewer are looking through the fourth wall and then, you know, it's an invisible wall that, you know, they, the characters aren't supposed to respond to. So when they break that fourth wall, they're talking to the audience and they're aware that they're in a comic book or a television show or a movie or something like that. And when done properly, it's really funny and effective. And when done wrong, it's just cheap and gimmicky. And I think that the humor... I think John Byrne has a pretty good sense of humor. I mean, there's some pretty uh, cringy stuff. But other than that, like, I think that She-Hulk was very successful. I love the headman. That's why I paused on that. Um, and I guess part of the comedy was him using sort of, like, old, um, forgotten, like, sort of sillier um, villains. And the Toadmen first appeared in Hulk number two. So that's why they're appearing in She-Hulk number two. Which, I, this is actually kind of funny. And this uh, jibes with something I was... I just watched this uh, video, John Romita Sr. His run on Daredevil looked beautiful. Only six issues. He wished it was longer. But he said that his pacing was too slow. 
and that Jack Kirby had to come in and do layouts to like, because everything was like action when Kirby did it. And here, like the editor is like, what the heck is going on here? Like this is in Better Homes and Gardens. We're like seeing, you know, like the layout of her apartment and stuff. Which of course, when I first saw it, I was like, oh wow, that's a really nice apartment. And then we got popcorn and then the editor's bitching about him having popcorn as the action. If this were Kirby, we would have this. And this is kind of breathtaking right here. All these toad men ships all over the skyline of New York, which was very cool. I love this page, I think it's so cool. And there's a note like, there you go, here it is. And he's like, uh, I'm not gonna draw this fleet again. And then there's a note from the anchor saying, if you do, I quit. <laughs> So that's kind of the humor going on in She-Hulk, and I don't know, um, it was fun and different for the time, and hell, it's John Byrne drawing She-Hulk, and, you know, his She-Hulk just loves being She-Hulk, and she's unapologetic about it, and she's just, but see, once again, cringy, like, she, well, and I guess that's part of the, uh, old school humor is, you know, she gets her sweater blown to breads, and of course, she's in a bra. But, <clears throat> whatever. It is what it is, right? It could be worse, I guess. <laughs> Mysterio. I love it. This is, I've noticed, uh, you know, when looking over a lot of burn stuff um, over the past, however long I've been doing these videos, uh, I noticed that uh, a lot of times he uses villains that aren't, what they seem sometimes they're like a hologram or a robot or something like that but what a great page so i love john burns art and this is like the perfect example why he's such a pretty she he draws the best she hulk i mean come on find me someone who draws a better she hulk i mean there's a lot of people who draw really good she beat she hulks but john Byrne probably does the best one even when she's headless here spoilers <laughs> See, there's like the humor, like her disembodied head talking for six panels, and then she gets a pie thrown in her face. I mean, sign me up. I'll take it. I love it. I'm totally down for a comical shield. I always thought Ruby's head should have been a little bit bitter, bigger. It looks not to be like a size queen, but it just looks a little, I don't know, lacking. Like, it should be more in proportion. But that's not the design of the character. But I love her. I think she's cool. So I'll take her tiny, tiny crystal ball head and all. And there's She-Hulk. Isn't this, this is like uh, body horror, like grotesquery. Like since it's funny, it's funny. But like you think that her head is really like disembodied. Like how are you going to fix that burn? Oh my God. <laughs> Which is so strange. And now like uh, she's got this old man head on her green She-Hulk body. I don't know. It was funny. I love She-Hulk. This is just like a great, fun read. And, you know, not everything has to be like a big cosmic adventure. If he wants to have her changing clothes for six panels or whatever. This is the, the blonde phantom, the heroine from the early... I don't know if it was Marvel or if it was still, it was, must have been, if it was in the 40s, it was Timely Comics before they became Marvel Comics, but she was a crime fighter, and now I, like, burn, had her age in real time and become, like, uh, She-Hulk's, I don't know, sidekick, I guess, her at a candy, which, that's what I kind of liked about, um, the Blonde Phantom and, um, she hopes relationship, it kind of reminded me of Wonder Woman and Etta Candy, so that was fun. And cool stilt man. Just when you didn't think stilt man could be cool, here he comes. Thanks, John Byrne. And of course, she's immediately down to fighting in her slip. Why doesn't she wear a superhero costume under her costume? Like, uh, I love this because I think this window is supposed to be open, which would expose her big middle-aged belly, but um, the colorist saved us that. But I kind of want to see that. Look at all these stilt man legs all tied up in each other. 
I think he did, what, eight or nine issues before he left. Issue number five. Like a take on the Flintstones. I guess if they really, if that's what they really look like, which that is funny. Get some Three Stooges. I love when Byrne does little fun things like that. Like you're getting all kinds of homages and you're like Mighty Mouse and Stre I guess Streaky the Cat maybe. Is that his name? I don't know. I, I've always been more of a Marvel person, but I do love my DC. I love a lot of DC stuff, but I feel like if I had to choose, oh God, that would be a terrible choice. Don't make me do it. I'm kind of not remembering this, Dr. Bond. I haven't read this in forever, but totally hilarious. And I think John Byrne has a, a love for, um, like, the old Uncle Scrooge comics, so it's kind of fun to see him draw a duck-type character. Oh, and RoboCop. How cool is that? Like, I love the pop culture references going on in here. I think that's when, I mean, I know as a comedian myself, yes, believe it or not, um, I always found, oh, see, like, Castle Grayskull. <laughs> I always found uh, pop culture humor to be funny. See, and here he goes, just like having her, like she's ripping through the pages of the comic book to get to the next page or whatever. He was pretty inventive with all the little plot contrivances and gimmicks and little sticky things. That is a really well-drawn panel. I love that. I'm a sucker for fishnets, what can I say? Oh, Al Gordon's. I like Al Gordon and King John Byrne. I think that it's a good fit. I just did Wild Star with Jerry Ordway and uh, Al Gordon, and I really love the art on that, so it's fun to see this. This looks a little different from the period when he inked Byrne on Fantastic Four. Uh, but this looks really good. <laughs> I love Razorback. I just love these fun, like, obscure characters that are just so weird. Like, I mean, that's, John Byrne just gets the fun of comic books. I mean, you're, you have this, like, big boar pig head cowl on the back of your head. I mean, come on, that's so amazing. Ah, I love this. This is so cool. This is John Byrne, big, like, being arty or, uh, I don't know, techy or just like, you know, it's so funny because he's so proficient with just an art board, um, a pencil and his right hand and he just makes such magic. And I love when he does different things like this because obviously there's some sort of Xeroxing or I don't know, Photoshop. I doubt Photoshop, uh, just given the time period that this is from, but um, just really fun, the stuff he would do with Xerox art and stuff like that. Because I believe Kirby did some experiments and with things like that, um, like in the 2001 Space Odyssey adaption. And so it's fun just to see, you know, everything seems to be so much at your disposal now with all the, the drawing apps and the Photoshop and all that stuff. So it's fun to see artists, you know, techniques and just innovation from back in the day. <laughs> I know back in the day seems like a tired expression, but it just works for some reason, don't you think? Anyway, okay, so I have no mouth and I am mean Zemnu, I think is this guy's name, and it's so funny. Oh, there's Wheezy. That's such, like, I just love this. There's so much joy to John Byrne's art. And you can just tell that he loves the character of She-Hulk and loved drawing her. And if he just wasn't having the time of his life, although he did leave, perhaps for editorial differences. I don't know. I don't know why he left the first time. But it's still a fun book. It's still 
All right, here comes She-Hulk and Hercules. Another parallel to, uh, I kind of like them as a couple. I'm sure they dated, right? She-Hulk kind of got around for a while there, didn't she? But I would, I would be like burning through these superheroes. <laughs> if I were She-Hulk. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Oh, this is hilarious. So whatever, this is what I love uh, when, cause John Byrne, you know, has such a great nostalgia to his stories and stuff. And the smacks of like, I don't know, 1950s, 60s, kind of science fiction-y, kind of just fun stuff. I mean, if you, this, you know, I, I'm not like a Furby or a furry or whatever they call those people, but I'm kind of thinking she looks sexy there and I probably should have my head examined, but hey, it's She-Hulk. <laughs> So she does look pretty hot. I'm so excited for the Marvel Universe She-Hulk show. I can't wait. Tatiana um, from, uh, oh, what was that great show she was on? The only show she's on, it's slipping my mind. But um, Orphan Black, such an amazing actress. I loved her. If you guys haven't seen that. Uh, Perry Mason, I think, was it on HBO or Showtime? One of the two. HBO, I think uh, she played a great character in that. And I think she's going to do awesome. I think she's going to do for She-Hulk what Mark Ruffalo did for Hulk. That's fun. I love when the uh, U.S. agent, I remember him. I had, like, I collected that. I'll have to see if I can dig those up. Those were something else. So, obviously, Santa Claus. I mean, why wouldn't She-Hulk meet Santa Claus? Why wouldn't she, you know, <clears throat> have a flying car that can fly in space? The artwork is so good, you guys. It would be so nice to get Burn. You know, Burn's doing his X-Men hit uh, Else One fan fiction right now. And I'm hoping, I don't know if she, you know, Fantastic Four showed up. Alpha Fly showed up briefly. The Avengers. Um, you know, would it be too much to hope for to get... She-Hulk in there somehow, like a, an early appearance, maybe when she was still the Savage She-Hulk. I don't know. You know, now if uh, if he just finishes out the rest of his career doing fan fiction, the sky's the limit. This is such an awesome page. I love this. She-Hulk just, I don't know, she's just so beautiful the way John Byrne draws her. I really love and appreciate the way he draws her. Well, she is just swooning for Hercules and... Of course, we don't blame her, do we? But here comes St. Nick. <laughs> I love that uh, Santa Claus is a full-on uh, supporting character in the She-Hulk comic book. That's funny. That's, uh, that's a very um, John Byrne kind of pose. The sideways view of them walking off panel like that. All the burnisms. What are some of your favorite burnisms or tropes, as I say, for lack of a better word? Um, I don't know. Oh, here's. Oh, okay. So this is. Uh, that was his last issue. I guess he did eight issues and then left. And then so here he comes back, thirty at issue thirty one. And he's trying to pretend like he never left and nothing in between happened, which is funny, right? And now he's doing his uh, own inks uh, with the figure inks and Keith Williams is doing like the uh, background inks, I think is how they normally work together. But it says Keith Williams embellishing, so maybe he just did the whole thing. It kind of, yeah, it kind of looks less like John Burns figure inks. We'll see what happens. Funny how, I mean, I totally remember, you know, when he came back, because obviously I was on board. I would, I don't, there's no, like, I can't think of even a bad example of, like, a comic book that he would draw that I wouldn't get, because, like, even something that I don't like would, like, would still be good by John Byrne. Like, I almost said Lobo, but I mean, I, I love Lobo. Why wouldn't I get Lobo? Especially by John Byrne. 
Yeah, there's nothing he could draw that I wouldn't buy, so. Let's just put it like that. This is funny, this, I don't know, I'm gonna have to hunker down and reread this because it seems a little less inspired, like the art isn't looking as great. And I hate to say that because I think it's an inking issue, but who knows? I mean, John Byrne was always drawing two issues a, a month, two different books, so maybe he was rushed, I don't know. But anyway, or did I miss something? I don't know. Yeah, the inking looks really rough here. But, you know, not unforgivable, I guess. Okay, so she hopes gonna marry the, the mole man. Boy, what made that happen? Yeah, see, I'm gonna go. He, see, look how solid the pencils look. You can just tell, so I don't know. I think Byrne should have inked his own figures. That's so funny. Clearly, the Simpsons here, like if they were real people, look at Marge's blue hair and Maggie and Lisa and Bart oh, and Homer looking scary. See, now the Simpsons would look super scary if they were real. I mean, I, we've all seen like, well, maybe we all haven't, but they're out there like, uh, you know, uh, what do you call CGI and, um, you know, digital paintings and stuff of them as real people. And it's frightening to say the least. Um, so here we have She-Hulk getting ready to get married. I think, oh, there's Wheezy. Yeah, this inking is doing nothing for me. Sorry, guys. But, I mean, we saw how gorgeous the art was looking like in the first eight issues of this. And, I mean, it still looks good. It's still John Byrne. That's another typical John Byrne pose of the somebody waking up excited from a bad dream. I know I can, I feel like I can see Johnny Storm in that exact same position. <laughs> but you know, oh, this is giving me like Psycho House vibes, right? How cool is that? I, <laughs> I doubt that was what he was going for. Maybe, I don't know. Far be it for me to try to read John Byrne's mind and figure out how that works and what he was thinking. Here we go with more fun. Who is that guy? This The Black Talon. How cool is that? I, <laughs> I mean, this. I said this about DC Comics and I think Marvel needs to do the same. Like, just look through your bed. Like, bust out of, uh, your copies of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe and just start thumbing through those pages, baby. And the ideas will come to you. The untapped well of characters that you have at your disposal is just amazing. I love this. Um, <clears throat> so now we have, like, a zombie X-Men which is hysterical because, you know, She-Hulk's supposed to be a comedy book. So, um, this is a great way for, I mean, you can tell that John Byrne always returns to the X-Men any chance he gets, like, X-Men Hidden Years. He'd probably still be doing Hidden Years if they hadn't canceled it, to be honest with you. He seemed to be, like, really enjoying that book. And, um, I think he, you know, we all know his history and cantankerousness and stuff, but... I feel like he got he got and is getting a raw deal from Marvel and they just need to they need to finish the last Galaxia story. They can print it as a huge treasury sized edition and just get the team together while they've still got their wits about them. It couldn't take much. It was almost finished anyway. It's a crime against humanity that they do not finish that. So just give it to us. Okay, that's my case on that. And also, you know, Hidden Years, or not Hidden Years, but Else One. Why not? I mean, they have so many other alternate X-Men timelines and things. I mean, there's room and demand for it. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go go check out the fan fiction section of johnburnrobotics.com. Or actually, it's burnrobotics.com. So, that is John Burns official and only website, his only official internet presence. 
And isn't that funny? <laughs> a uh, answering machine, because um, that's not dated, uh, leaving a message, and uh, that's the cover. Special holiday issue. Okay. So, uh, White Wingfoot returns. I love White Wingfoot. They make such a great couple. That would be a great, like, Fantastic Four book, like, uh, Jen and Wyatt and Johnny and I don't know who should the fourth person be. Because, I mean, traditionally, of course, you know, the FF should be Reed and Sue and Johnny and um, Ben, but... Oh, I wonder, I wonder who's in this crowd. You know, there's got to be somebody interesting and different or whatever. By the way, this is a nice omnibus. Like, um, I feel like they're slightly larger. They could have even went bigger for me because um, I like the art to be as big as we can get. But I do appreciate them going a little up in size because it makes it a little nicer for this deluxe deluxe edition kind of treatment <laughs> so here we go <laughs> like just people sitting around having dinner i guess this is the holiday issue so no action no villains no no i guess not i guess they pulled it off about that so here we got to make up for it. I mean, come on, the last cover had an answering machine message on the cover. So I don't know if they were just like waking us up here, but then we've got Wolverine, Punisher, and Spider-Man. And um, <laughs> she says, notice nothing is said about them actually being in this issue. So I don't think they're actually in the issue, but it is a great joke and statement on how these three characters pretty much were in every marvel book and just like all over the place and oversaturated <laughs> this is such an interesting character i love like his shrunken head is that oh garth okay an associate of the talon king i guess and he's got a crush on her This is such a fun design here. I love it. That doesn't have Kirby written all over it or anything, does it? Neither do this, these buildings. I love when Burn goes all Kirby. Okay, so here we go. And this is something Burn takes a lot of heat for sometimes. Like, I mean, come on. We're just getting a blank page here. And not only one blank page, but four blank pages. I mean, I don't know, that feels a little lazy. And here she is ripping through the page, which is fun, you know, but it could have just happened for two pages. Like, how do you justify four pages of blank pages? I don't know, right? But anyway. Oh, good. So we have John Byrne inking this one, and I just love this picture of She-Hulk here. And she just looks so pretty and cute. She's in bed with like this jigsaw puzzle design blanket, and there's all these hearts around her. And she just, Looks so pretty and smiling, and that's the She-Hulk that I love. And there's Wheezy, restored to her gorgeous blonde phantomness. And then it's been a hot minute, so we gotta get Jen in a lingerie over here. Oh well, she's She-Hulk. I guess this is good girl art, huh? What kind of crazy old uh, Kirby villain must that be? Oh, here we go, Turnabout's Fair Play. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. It's about time my female readers got something to look at. So we get Wyatt Wing with a shirtless. And I have to say, um, the art on this is so good because it also has the duo shade that John Byrne used a lot throughout his career, um, notably on Omac and uh, Namor, which is really cool. And the art just looks really good here. I love when he inks himself. He's my favorite inker on my favorite penciler. It's weird to see Byrne draw um, Four Freedoms Tower and not, uh, or Plaza or whatever, and not the Baxter Building because he's so associated with it. And I can just see the Baxter Building in my brain right now, can't you guys? 
Oh my God, the art in just the here is just so fun for such a silly story. This art is just like mind boggling. I love it. Oh, just when he thought it couldn't get better and now it burns still inking and there's still duo shade and we get the fricking thing. Nobody draws a thing better than John Byrne. And sorry, but I, John Byrne's Fantastic Four was like my introduction to the FF and my introduction to Byrne at the same time. So nobody can ever sway me on that. He just draws him perfect, no matter what incarnation. And I mean, just, I'll give Kirby second. I'll give him that, I will. I'll be generous like that and say Kirby draws the second best thing. Of the second best thing. Um, anyway, well, that's a cool looking outfit for She-Hulk there. Very um, Kirby vibes, right, guys? I love all these fun characters. <laughs> John Byrne just makes fun superhero comic books. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I mean, I could just look at his art all day. And that's pretty much what I do, I guess, when I'm doing these videos. But, whoop, there it is. Okay, and now, just because I was feeling too good, here we come to the issue where she skips rope naked for 22 pages for no reason other than, like, how is there a female editor letting this happen? And a female colors. But I don't know, it's supposed to be a joke, right? People, it's a, I don't know. He still worked it in. But of course, they're gonna mention it and, you know. Oh, maybe she wasn't, oh, see, that's the gag too. She wasn't naked all along. She was just wearing a bikini and since the blur lines were able to <laughs> cover, then we get her in the shower. Okay. So maybe it's a cheesecake TNA book. I don't know. You know, but not really. I guess they just, it's sort of distracting, like kind of unnecessary, but I don't know when it's funny, I guess it's okay. As long as it's not too offensive or sexist or over the top. I mean, is she Hulk sexist by definition? She's just a female version of the Hulk anyway, so. I guess one could argue that's kind of a trope, right? Isn't Wonder Woman just a female version of Superman? And the answer is no. They are so, so much more, obviously. And in good hands, they're great. And I have to say, with his love and affection of the character, John Byrne was probably better to She-Hulk than most other people were. So good on you for making She-Hulk the, the sensation that she is, because I don't think she'd be as popular as she is without burn. I could be wrong. I mean, somebody else could have made her great too. I don't know. But, um, very cool. I love U.S. Agent as a subplot in here. Way to utilize. See, that's what I'm talking about. John Byrne knows how to use Marvel characters that people have forgotten or just left underutilized. I realize how slow I've been going through this and I know there's no way <laughs> half the viewers are hanging in here this long, but if you love She-Hulk the way I do, you understand. An answering machine, such a great uh, timeless plot device for a story. And there's John Byrne at his desk. He always includes himself in the story. No ego there, um, but I love his desk. Is it like six by 10 feet big or whatever? 
Oh my god, like it's humongous. I don't think it's really that big. I've seen pictures of a studio, but that is super cool. I would, I would love to have a big warehouse to work in like that. That would be freaking awesome. Okay, is there, are we turning with Zemnu here? Because here we go. Now this is interesting because John Byrne is inking himself and he's not doing the duo shade, but it looks like he's trying to create some sort of almost duo shade effect there and it's not effective for me. Yeah, I'd rather not see him do that. But hey, as an artist, especially one who pencils and inks, and there's so many variations and styles and tools to ink with, you know, I guess you gotta keep yourself entertained and, but it's just not really working. It's like, it's bringing down his style rather than, like the duo shade accentuates it. And that's just kind of, I feel like this is what a lot of like, uh, comic book inkers, Penciler anchors do to cover up bad artwork, and he doesn't need that, obviously, because he's amazing. And I love the space outfit, that's so cool. She looks like Barbie, you can just dress her up in different outfits, and she always looks cute. <laughs> Zemnu, hilarious. Okay, so this is John Byrne doing a riff on uh Rob Liefeld and trying to do a Rob Liefeld impersonation. And I have to say he's pulling it off fairly well. I have to say it looks good. Maybe the anatomy is too good, but it's still very reminiscent of that style. Now, what's going on with the inking? Okay, we're still doing, he's penciling and inking. And he's still doing that, trying to have, oh no, is that, or no, see? obviously he's getting much better so I take back what I said because it looks a lot better this time around it looks more like what he was trying to achieve I think a little steadier with the duo shade kind of look I still don't prefer it but I gotta commend somebody for honing their craft especially when you're so well established as it is like you know um I was watching a, a very telling interview with uh, John Romita Jr. And he said that he just needed to get a point to a point in his style where he could be comfortable in a style that was quick enough um, and, and not worry about moving past that. And I thought that was interesting because uh, Aside from slight variations, his style hasn't evolved too much over the years, but. So a lot of stuff going on in the She-Hulk isn't there. And that's a very cool super, uh, I shouldn't say super scroll. It could be any scroll for all we know, but um, I do love the super scroll, but it is a cool looking scroll. Once again, John Byrne draws scrolls probably better than most people. Ah, Rocket Raccoon, are you dying? Like, how cool is that? I mean, of course, this is way before Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but uh, very cool to see Rocket Raccoon, just to see George or John Byrne draw Rocket Raccoon. After Joe Demir, so he's doing some sort of homage to a painting, to paint fine paintings with She-Hulk, which is fine with me. Very, I'm, I'm very down when art artists get uh artsy but i have to say this could have been the beginning of like his bad period of inking and i hate to say bad period of inking but <clears throat> there was a time like uh when he was on wonder woman it started out pretty rough but then he evolved and found a more suitable style but some of this is, uh, and like I said, and I'll always say, John Burns like pizza though, even, even not as great pizza is still really good. So John Burns, it just is always good no matter what, no matter what, <laughs> 
that's interesting what's happening with she -Hulk. Because she switched bodies with uh, Wheezy. Well, good on you, Wheezy, huh? <laughs> She's reminding me of uh, Dream Girl in that outfit. And I love, like, why would she still need her glasses? Theoretically, turning into She-Hulk should correct your vision and give you gamma radiation vision. Or that could be, like, a secondary evolutionary power for the... Hulk, like he can shoot gamma rays, radiation at people and turn them into hulks. <laughs> that would be messed up, right? And the thing again, it's interesting we get another thing splash page. Somebody was missing drawing the Fantastic Four, I think, and which is fine with me. Ah, we have them here. She looks so funny in uh, Weezy's body. <laughs> Now I want the Blonde Phantom to make her come back, too. Can I just go be editor-in-chief at Marvel for a, a year? I'll show you what's what. Oh my gosh, I love that uh, she stayed. they stayed switched for more than one issue. Who is the new She-Hulk? I love it. How fun. This is... I don't know why I don't remember, didn't remember this, or and there's no way. Of course, I've got this when it came out, but it's fun being reun reminded. And there's Thundra ready to <laughs> fight She Hulk, and of course she kicks her butt because she's in Weezy. <laughs> oh my God, how awful! She's like, heck yeah, things are back to normal. Thank God that couldn't last forever. Oh, and here's an interest. I love the issue 50 of She-Hulk. Is this the, this might be the last one. And if this was Burns' last run too. Oh, so he's got all these, he was gonna draw the whole issue in uh, other artist styles as a, as a pitch to the editorial of who should take over. Jaylee's name or from John Burns run that he wrote. Um, so he had different people draw She-Hulk pages as sort of like auditions for a new direction of her book. This is Dave Gibbons, obviously a riff on the Watchmen with the nine panel grid, which is kind of funny. Then you have Frank Miller, in case uh, you really needed me to tell you that. I mean, who else could this be but Frank Miller? So this is She-Hulk. As if she was like a Sin City comic book, which is hysterical. Then you got Wendy Peeney of Elfquest fame. So she hulked like an sword and sorcery adventure, which I love Elfquest so much. Uh, one of my all time favorite comics. The art is just beautiful. The story is, story is amazing. So you get two pages of Wendy. Then this is classic riff on Walt Simonson. Um, parroting his run on Thor with all the great John Workman lettering and the sound effects. And I have to say, worth the price of admission right here to see She-Hulk wield Mjolnir and um, just turning to the Jade Giantess of Thunder. I mean, that would actually be like a really cool storyline. Do that, Marvel, and get Walt to do it. Howard Shaken. Um... American Flag, Black Kiss, great legendary uh, artist. I think that's supposed to be Byrne and She-Hulk, which is funny because he captured the lecherous look on Byrne's face perfectly. Oh, and this is funny too. So Terry Austin, uh, who uh, is a penciler as well as an anchor, and his style, I always felt sort of lent itself to cartooniness anyway. And he famously put Popeye in the background of an X-Men comic, which allegedly pissed Burn off. So I guess this is sort of a play on that with uh, She-Hulk becoming Popeye through Terry Austin's eyes, which is funny. And then we have oh, a couple pages here by good girl artist Adam Hughes, which is excellent. I love Adam Hughes and Adam Hughes from She-Hulk is always welcome. 
Um, he's drawn some great She-Hulk images over the years. And of course they're rejecting all these. And then we have Howard Mackey, I guess, uh, trying to draw like Mark Texiera, which is strange. And then this is like a, the backup story by the new creative team, Todd Britton, whatever happened to him. But kind of fun pencils for solid for a newcomer. And I don't know how, if I stayed on for how many issues, but I'm sure it wasn't very long because without burn, it just wasn't the same. And, um, Jern, here's Burn drawing She-Hulk in a cartoony style, like a la Sugar and Spike. And that was it for Burn on She-Hulk. I guess the rest is history. It's a little interview with Burn back here. Great cover from Marvel Age. Oh, that must be the interview from Marvel Age. Duh! <laughs> when he was, when he came back to Marvel and did West Coast Avengers and She-Hulk at the same time. And that was a good time to be in comics. That's where a lot of stuff from WandaVision comes from. Anyway, this is a great book. I'm so happy to have all this cool John Byrne art and all my She-Hulk in one place. Even though I hate the corner with the big ding in it. This would be my reader copy because you should really have omnibus reader copies since they're so cheap. I don't know what the, oh, this is this comparison of uh, <laughs> Rob Liefeld. Oh, he, he directly swiped Rob Liefeld, which is hysterical unto itself. I love it. So if you love John Byrne, you love She-Hulk and you love John Byrne She-Hulk, you definitely need your omnibus this omnibus in your life. Thanks for sticking around if you did. I know it was a long one. Anyway, please subscribe to my channel, hit like. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye.